Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I thought it'd be kind of fun for us to do a little mini deck, a micro deck, something really small to scale of what we do on a larger scale. And thanks for coming to our channel. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Studio Man and I were talking about this. It was actually his concept. He's like, why don't you make a scaled small micro deck? and we'll do it from start to finish. So today, what I thought we'd do, we'd start by making some footings. Now I'm gonna just cut everything out of wood and it will resemble what I'm gonna tell you as far as the size of the footing or the size of the beam or posts or joists or whatever. And then we'll just kind of go from there. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna cut out a replica of a footing. And for that, I'm just gonna use a piece of two by four treated in three and a half inches square. So once we have that done, then we will cut out our posts. Everything I'm gonna do today is just out of pressure treated lumber, it's just some scraps I have. So I'm gonna cut those into a one inch square. And then for the beams, we need two of those. We're gonna cut those out of a piece of inch and a half by one inch. And then the joists, I'm not sure yet. We haven't quite got there. I'll figure that out as we go. I'll kind of build the rest of this as we're going and we'll start cutting these parts out and then we'll assemble them and I'll explain to you how we actually do it. Anybody that's new to our channel that has never built a deck or that's just interested in deck building in general, I think this is really good information because it's gonna put everything to get you to a platform in one video. All right, so let's get started by cutting out some pieces on the table saw and the chop saw. So here's the parts we have cut out so far. We basically have four blocks that represent our footings. We have four posts that will represent our posts for our deck, which are, we'll just say they're six by six. Here's a replica of a 12 inch beam. So a six by 12. So you're gonna have two of those. If this is, we're building a freestanding model here. So that's why we have to have everything to scale as well as two beams instead of one. Normally we could hang on the house and only have one beam. From there, our joists are gonna go on top of these beams and then we'll have an outside rim joist on both sides, and then we'll put decking on top of that. So all those parts we still have to make. So let's start making our joist. So I'm just gonna say, since this is a replica of a footing, a six by six post, and a six by 12, now we're gonna put down maybe some two by eight or two by 10 joists. Let's just do like maybe a half inch. This is not gonna be super scaled guys, but we'll just make some parts. I'm just gonna rip them down on the table saw real quick and then I need 13 of them. We're gonna represent one inch as one foot on this. So there's, there's gonna be tw uh, 13 joists total. So we're gonna have one every 12 inches plus zero. You need one at zero. Oh, there goes my deck. We'll keep that from collapsing because we're going to pin it all together with this Metabo HPT pinner. We have some inch and a half brad nails, they're 18 gauge. Something quick and dirty for you guys to uh, check out. When I go to start nailing things together, it might get a little sketchy, but we'll see how it goes. It's really just for fun, so we're not going to get overcritical if we have a couple blowouts, right? All right, so let's make those joists. Maybe we'll just make them inch and a half by like three-eighths of an inch, and then we'll make 13 pieces of that, and then that'll be done, and then we'll get on to uh, the decking. All right, let's go. So we have everything to get our skeleton built, but we gotta make some decking now, right? It wouldn't be a deck unless we put some deck boards down. So we have to calculate how many deck boards we need and we'll just have to do it to scale. I'm not gonna probably make them 100% to scale, but I could probably make them a replica of one inch wide, which would be a 12 inch wide board, which is kind of wide, but you guys will get the idea. Let's grab a piece of Azek. We'll make those and then we'll be ready to start assembling our deck. All right guys, so basically we have all the parts we need, everything simulated. We have some TimberTech AZAC decking pieces that we're gonna use for our deck boards. And we have our beams, our joists, our footings, and our posts. So when you build a deck, the first thing you have to do is lay out your footing locations. We're just gonna build a 12 inch 
by 12 inch mock-up deck, okay? The first thing you have to have are footings for your deck. So that's what we have here, four pieces of two by four that simulate a concrete footing block. Once you have those laid out, usually when you pour concrete, you're either going to pour the concrete and roto hammer a bracket to the concrete, or you're going to put a wet set bracket in the concrete or you're gonna use a helical pile. Well, I didn't have any helical pile samples for this demonstration. So we're just going old school. And we'll say this is like a three foot footing. Like these are big, but where I come from, the state has mandated us to build a 60 pound per square foot live load, which meant we had to triple the size of our footings from a 40 pound per square foot live load. It got ridiculous and we're having to put all kinds of rebar and all that. And that's why I've moved on to helicals. But for this uh, deck, we're just using a, a simulated footing. So the next step is you need to get your posts cut to elevation because we're doing a post frame with beams and joists for this deck. So I'm just going to locate center. So we're about an inch and an eighth off each section of a footing, okay? I've got my little pinner and I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this together. All right, there's one. So now we have our footings and we have our posts set on our footings. And usually, obviously your footings are gonna be in the ground, laid out, all completely square, looking good, so on and so forth. We could grab a square and we can square this stuff up really quick before we put our beams in. Let's move these out of the way for a sec. Let's talk about our beams. So our beams, they span on top of the posts. You gotta know your lumber spans. There's several lumber span charts on the internet. The important thing to know is how far can you go between these two posts and how much cantilever are you gonna have on the outsides of the posts. There's a beam span chart that tells you for a certain size and species of lumber, you can go a certain width. So if you go to Google and you type in beam span chart and then you look up number two pressure treated hemlock wet and sized whatever, it'll give you a span for most lumber. Now a six by material, usually they don't have spans for that. It usually goes up to four by 12 or something like that. So depending on the size of your lumber, you may have to consult an engineer or somebody else to give you that span. I'm not gonna give it to you today because I'm not qualified. I'm not a mathematician. I don't, I don't have that information for you. You're gonna have to figure it out for yourself uh, or go to the internet. Okay, we know we're gonna put a joist 12 inches on center or one inch on center because we're just scaling this down. So basically what I wanna do is I wanna quickly lay out where my joists are gonna go every inch on this little deck. All right, I couldn't find a speed square, but I, I have a little L square, which will basically do the same thing. So I'm just marking out on both beams where the joists need to go, okay? just like I would on a normal deck. Okay, now that my beams are laid out, I can even put a little X on each side for marking, just so I know, okay, this is the side. Once your beams are laid out like this and you've matched them up, you gotta make sure that you don't take this one and turn it around or something like that. They always wanna be kind of laid in place so that you, you don't mess up your layout. Okay, let's just say our footings are laid like that and we're just gonna have like an inch and an eighth overhang or inch and a quarter, we'll say like this. Once you have this figured out, now we're gonna pin the beam to the post. Now there's lots of different hardware on the market for you to do this. Simpson makes a lot of great options for you. Uh, there's post to beam connections. You can go to your local lumber yard and they should be able to help you figure out what you need to be able to assemble this and hold it all together. We're using pin nails for our example, but you guys get the point. Now, sometimes we actually do this with a framing gun or with screws. So this is kind of accurate as far as replication. Okay, so that's that beam and post set. Now let's do this one. All right, guys, so you have, so far you have your deck to the point where your footings are in, your posts are in, your beams are in, they're level and laid out. Normally this is the time where we start G-taping stuff, like put a protective uh, membrane layer on top. We're not gonna do that today, but 
uh, something to consider. If you're gonna G-tape your joists, you might as well G-tape your beams before you put your joists on top of them. It's really hard to do afterwards, and it's not as nearly as effective if, as if you did it before you put on your joists. Let's just say for this exercise that our beams are good to go. Now there's a thing called cantilever. You can cantilever past your beam a certain distance depending on the thickness of your joist. These are resembling a two by 12 joist, we'll say. So you could cantilever quite a bit. How much, I can't tell you exactly. That's left up to a structural engineer to figure out for you or you'll know if you're a professional deck builder, okay? So I'm just gonna simulate like, we're probably going to cantilever each joist. We're just say we're gonna do an inch and a half to scale, which is probably 16 inches or so. And I'm just gonna use a piece of this framing material to get that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tack this to the side. Now, these may blow out a little bit, I don't know. So there's my distance. So I've got this side pinned. So once you have an end pin, you're kind of committed to where they go. You can see I got a little blowout on that one. It's gonna be hard to pin these edges down completely perfect, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin this end and get all my distance proper. Actually, I don't think I can do this because if I do, I'm not gonna be able to get this gun in here to pin in this last joist. So I'm gonna have to build my frame out this way from here on out. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is like temporarily clamp this. Okay, we're just gonna tempt this up with some clamps so I can have a place to put all my nails in. Something else that we do when we're building is we take our frame and we'll grade all our framing to thickness. You can actually see there is a thickness difference even in between two by fours and two by sixes. You can see where my finger is right here, highs and lows. If you multiply that by scale, that can become a serious issue. So we would normally grade all our framing, like these two boards are thicker, and we put those to one side, and we take the thickest boards, and we would take all the thin ones and move them to the right or left, so on and so forth, until, well actually what we do is we take the thickest board and we move it to the far end, and then we just keep taking the thickest board out of the set until we're done. But there you go. So just a little quick tip for you. All right. So now our joists are graded. I know where they all need to go. We're gonna have an outside rim joist on each side of this deck, right? You gotta have a way, if you're doing a freestanding deck, usually I put a string line across here to bring all of my joists into play. But we'll just use a straight edge. We'll just make sure that we've got the same distance on each one. Okay, there you go. So then you put all your joists in. Okay, so now I'm getting this tacked in. I can go ahead, now that I know these beams aren't gonna move around, I'm gonna take this clamp off and get those out of the way. And I can continue putting on the rest of my joists. And to scale, these are probably a little too close together, but you know. Yeah, we got way too many joists, that's all right. All right, so now we have all of our joists installed. Now, sometimes we'll do some uh, over beam pressure blocking, which are cutting little blocks in between here to keep the joists from doing this, okay? We're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna go ahead and put on our outside rim joists and nail all that stuff together, and we can square these up as we go. So I'm gonna add a couple more fasteners onto this outside right here. And then that's your next step, is putting up this rim joist. And we do the same thing for the other side. As you start putting this together, it really starts to get solid, even on a little micro scale. All right, so we have our deck fully framed. It's ready to go. We have our decking all laid up on top of our deck, and now it's time to start installing the decking. The decking comes a couple different ways. There's solid planks and there's groove planks. Today, we're just gonna use solid plank. We're not gonna screw it down. I usually would use a thing called Cortex. I'm probably just gonna do every other joist or something like that, uh, just to pin this stuff together. We have 19 boards, and if we put a 16th inch gap in each one, we've already calculated this out, it should get us to the other end. We may have to adjust our gap a little bit to get us to that magic spacing that we need. To keep those gaps consistent, I have a couple of shims, some plastic shims I get at Home Depot, and they're composite shims, and the ends of these are about a 16th of an inch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put those in here. Actually, I think what I'm gonna do is break them off, and we'll just use that as our gapping tool, okay? All right, here we go. So this is usually how you fasten down a deck, is you face screw or nail or blind screw the fasteners 
through the decking or into the sides of the decking and into the joist framing of your deck. All right, guys, so now let's just say your deck is laid. You have all the framing on top covered, but what about the sides of this thing? Well, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of fascia to the sides of this micro deck just to kind of trim it out. We're gonna do it in a little bit different color called dark hickory. So I'm gonna go grab a piece of that and we'll slap that on and then our deck will be done. There you go, guys. There is your mini deck, your micro deck, we'll call it. I hope you learned something today. And if you did, or if you enjoyed this video, please click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content, which is usually three days a week. Sometimes I kick in a couple extra videos uh, from our on-site antics. So stay tuned for those as well. Definitely watch our shorts too. Uh, it really helps us in our channel. And leave us a comment below and let me know what you thought of our mini deck. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.